Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about Charles La. Charles La was first developed by Jacques Charles, a French scientist that lived between the 17 and 1800s. And his law basically states that if you hold the pressure of a gas constant, meaning it does not change, then the uh, Kelvin temperature and volume of that gas will be directly proportional. So let's take a look here. If we were to graph Charles Law, it might look something like this right here. Okay, you have the, uh, the volume of a gas on the x-axis and the uh, temperature of that gas on the y-axis. And as we take a look at the graph of Charles Law, we can see that as the volume of a gas increases, its temperature too increases in a direct proportion. Now what do we mean by direct? Well, if you take a look here, if you take a look at this graph, if the volume of a gas doubles, then that is doubling because the temperature of that gas is also doubling. All right, if the volume of a gas quadruples, it's because the temperature is quadrupling as well. Conversely, if you take a look, if the volume of a gas is decreasing, it's because the temperature is decreasing. So if the volume of a gas is decreasing by half of its original amount, that's happening because the temperature is also decreasing by a factor of one half. Now if you take a look at this graph, if we cool down the temperature of a gas, the volume decreases more and more and more until we get to this point right here. This point on the graph would be known as zero Kelvin, okay, or absolute zero. At absolute zero, uh, a gas occupies zero volume. And if we take a look at this graph right here, what this graph is saying is that if you decrease the temperature of a gas down to zero K, this point right here on our graph, then the volume of that gas will occupy zero space or zero volume at all. All right, so that's an important concept to understand. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. In this example here, we have three cylinders, and each one of these cylinders here is filled with the same amount of gas. All right, let's just suppose that each one of these cylinders has two moles of gas in it. Also, you'll notice that the pressure of each one of these cylinders is at one atmosphere, so the pressure is also being held constant. In this cylinder right here, we've got 150 liters of gas at a temperature of 300 K. All right. What happens to the volume of the gas that is in this cylinder if the temperature should happen to double? Well, according to Charles Law, if you hold the pressure constant, then the volume and temperature of that gas are directly proportional. And if the temperature here is doubling, which it is, then the volume here will double as well and we will end up with a volume of 300 liters right here. All right, so the volume right here will be 300 liters. Furthermore, let's take a look. What if the volume decreases to 75 liters? So the volume of the gas that's in this container has decreased to 75 liters. Why is it decreasing if the pressure is being held constant and we have the same amount of gas in, e in both of these cylinders? Well. The volume is decreasing, people, because if you take a look here, and according to Charles Law, the volume is decreasing because the temperature is going to decrease. And if you take a look closely, you'll notice that the volume here has decreased right here by a factor of one-fourth. Okay? It's gone from 300 to 75. This number here is exactly one-fourth of 300. So what will the temperature end up being? It will be one-fourth of 600, which is 150 Kelvin. Okay, so once again, Charles Law states that if you hold the pressure of a gas constant, then the volume and temperature of that gas will be directly proportional. All right, let's take a, look, a closer look. Let's suppose this is the starting volume of the gas, and this is the starting temperature. And if we compare these two cylinders, then this will be the final volume, and this will be the final temperature. All right, if we take a look very closely, we will notice that the initial volume of this gas divided by the temperature of the gas gives us one half. 150 divided by 300 is one half. And if we take a look at the, uh, the final volume of this gas, it's 300, and the final temperature of this gas is 200. 300 divided by 200 is also one half. So what Charles Law is telling us is that the initial volume of a gas divided by the initial temperature of the gas will always equal 
the final volume of the gas divided by the final temperature of the gas and the same would hold true if we compared these two gases right here we have 300 divided by 600 which is 100 and if you take a look at the final volumes over here 70 I'm sorry 300 divided by 600 is one half and if we take a look at the final uh, uh, the comparison between the volume and temperature here you can see that 75 divided by 150 is also one half all right so if we take a look at Charles law here's what Charles law is telling us the final I'm sorry the initial volume divided by the initial temperature of a gas is equal to the final volume divided by the final temperature of a gas provided that the pressure remains constant now I hate fractions just like everybody else does so if you take a look what we can do is we can cross multiply right we can cross multiply to get rid of these fractions here and if we cross multiply and get rid of these fractions what we can do is we can work with this formula right here for Charles law alright we can work with V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1 where V1 is the starting volume T2 is the final temperature V2 is the final volume and T1 is the starting temperature and always keep in mind that when we're working with Charles law formula either this formula or this formula here our temperature units always need to be in Kelvin they always need to be in Kelvin when we're working with Charles law and the volume units here will need to be the same those can be in milliliters or liters but as long as they're the same we should be okay let's work a couple of examples using Charles law formula okay in this problem it says a gas occupies 50 liters at 25 degrees Celsius how much space will it occupy at 50 degrees Celsius and we're gonna assume that the pressure is remaining constant so in this problem we have a gas and this gas is starting off occupying 50 liters so this is gonna be V1 and its temperature is going to be 25 degrees Celsius so this is going to be T1 the question here is asking how much space will it occupy so we're trying to find V2 in this problem here if its temperature is increasing to 50 degrees Celsius so this is T2 and we're assuming constant pressure so at first sight you might say to yourself well this is pretty easy I can figure this out in my head the temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius the starting temperature and the final temperature is 50 degrees Celsius these temperatures or I'm sorry the temperature is doubling if it's going from 25 to 50 the temperature is doubling therefore the volume must double and my final answer is going to be 100 liters piece of cake that's not the case people whenever we work with Charles law we must convert the Celsius temperatures here to Kelvin and how do we convert Celsius to Kelvin well to convert Celsius degrees Celsius to Kelvin we have to take the degrees Celsius and add 273 to it all right, so if I add 273 to this right here, I will end up with 298K. And if I add 273 degrees, or I'm sorry, 273 to 50 here, I will end up with 323K. All right, so before we start plugging numbers into Charles Law, we have to make sure that the temperature units are in Kelvin, which they are now. And so now we're going to use this formula to solve this problem. All right, so we know that V1 times T2 is going to equal V2 times T1. And if you take a look at this word problem here, we are asked to calculate the new volume. So we're trying to solve for V2. So I divide both sides by T1. These will cancel. And so the formula I'm going to use to solve this problem, it looks like, is going to be V2 equals V1 T2 all over T1. All right, so V1 in this problem, it looks like it's 50 liters times T2. T2 in this problem, it looks like it's 323K. And we're going to divide this all by T1, which is 298K. And we will put this in our calculator. And we're going to end up with 
nine five. I'm just going to go ahead and round to the thousands place. If your uh, instructor is a stickler for sig figs, go ahead and uh, apply the sig fig ru rules to these problems here. Uh, what unit are we working with or is left over with? We have liters. All right, so as this gas goes from 25 to 50 degrees Celsius, even though it looks like it's doubling, it's not. We have to convert it to Kelvin. So as this goes from 298K to uh, 323K, it looks like the volume is going to increase from 50 liters to 54.195 liters. Let's take a look at another example. In this example here, it says 75 liters of a gas at 200K expands to 200 liters. What will its new temperature be? We're going to assume constant pressure once again. Alright, so this is a Charles Law problem. And in this problem, we got 75 liters. So this here is going to be V1. That's what you're starting off with. And this right here is going to be T1. That's the initial temperature of this gas. Alright, it says that the gas is going to expand to 200 liters. This here is going to be V2. And you are asked to find its new temperature. It says, what will its new temperature be? Alright, so we are asked to calculate T2 in this problem. So once again, we know that V1T2 equals V2T1. And in this problem, we are solving for T2. So to get T2 all by itself on one side of that equal sign, I divide both sides by V1. And the formula I'm going to use to solve this problem is going to be T2 equals V2 T1 all over V1. All right, so let's go ahead and plug those numbers in now. We got T2 equaling V2, which in this problem is 200 liters, times T1, which is 200 Kelvin. And it's not degrees Kelvin, it's just Kelvin, so 200 Kelvin. And we're going to divide this by V1, which it says is 75 liters. All right, liters will cancel out, leaving you with what unit left over? We have Kelvin left over here. And we're going to put this in our calculator and round to the thousands place once again. And we're going to end up with 533.333 Kelvin. All right, so if we've got 75 liters of a gas, and it's expanding to 200 liters, then that must be because the temperature is going from 200 Kelvin to 533.333 Kelvin. All right, let's take a look at one final example. In this example here, it says 100 liters of a gas contracts to 30 liters at 100 Kelvin. What was the original volume? So in this problem here, we are asked to calculate the original volume. Okay what was its original volume so we are asked to calculate i'm sorry original temperature so we're asked to calculate t1 right what was its original temperature that's what we're trying to find here original temperature we have 100 liters is what we're starting off with we got 100 liters of gas right here it's getting smaller that must be because it's cooling down so uh, right here it's getting smaller and contracting to 30 liters it's taking up le less space so here's v2 and it looks like this is its temperature when it is at 30 liters. So this here is T2. And we're asked to find its original temperature. All right, once again, we're assuming constant pressure. So in this problem here, we know that this is a Charles Law problem where V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. And we are asked to calculate the original temperature. So we're asked to solve for T1. So I need to divide both sides by V2. If I divide both sides by V2, this will cancel out. And the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem is T1 equaling V1 T2 all over V2. All right. So now we can go ahead and plug the uh, numbers in. Let's make sure our volume units are the same. We have liters here and we have liters here. So we're, so we're good. V1 in this problem is 100 liters. times T2 in this problem, which is 100K. And we're going to divide this by V2 in this problem, which is 30 liters. We'll put this in our calculator. 
these units will ca cancel out and we should end up with 333.333 Kelvin. All right, so that's going to be our original temperature. Okay, so this is uh, this is Charles Lott in a nutshell, and I hope these problems were helpful.